No, I'm not a fan of that, but I am a fan of finding out what you're doing after this show. Maybe uh, we could go grab some drinks or something. What do you say? No, thanks. I found the devil. The devil? I found him. Really? Is this him? No. In this wheelchair? No. He's over here in this bucket. I kid you not. There he is. <laughs> Mr. Sin! <laughs> Oh my goodness. And I remember her saying, okay, you're going to play Mr. Sin today. And she hands me this purple puppet with the nasty mustache. Pop the little puppet up. And literally on cue, 80 kids out there all, boo, no, yuck, I hate that guy. I was like, man, these guys are trained on cue. Like, I don't know if they got candy for doing that or what. But, oh, man, they just want to come down on deep someone. theological teaching. Deep theological uh, teaching. Well. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Together We Build. My name is uh, Mr. Sin, and I'll be hosting this uh, TV broadcast today. How are you doing there, Foxy? Ha, oh, you apish, beast-eating abomination. Are you kidding me? Do you know who you're talking to? I'm Mr. Sin. You can't talk to me like that. What planet are you from, anyway? Such a beef wit. A beef wit? What is a beef wit? What are you reading from over there? What is all this? Something I'm sure you had a hand in um, helping out building. You don't have to be rude. Having here I am trying to host this here TV show, and you're over there calling me a beef eater? I said beef wit. Beef wit? That's even worse. <laughs> I think I'm the one that came up with that phrase. Yeah. So, uh, what is the topic of this here show, Prudence? Bucking authority. Bucking authority. Bucking authority. I love bucking authority. That's my favorite. Yeah. My second favorite is you. After the show, what are you doing? You then you don't like it. No, I'm not a fan of that. But I am a fan of finding out what you're doing after this show. Maybe uh, we could go grab some drinks or something. What do you say? No, thanks. Fine, you know what? I'm out of here then. All right, we got rid of that hoser. Who was that anyway? Oh, uh, I wish I could say he wasn't familiar, but I guess I do know him. <laughs> Word is that Mr. Sin was trying to start this show off. That's my job. Huh. I'm the one well, that's supposed to kick this show off. Luckily... He went away. All right. Okay. He took up a bunch of our trivia time. So let's just do uh, two short ones. All two right. short ones. Two short ones. Um, okay. If you don't know this one, you can never play again. What is a baby goat called? A kid. A kid. Nailed it. Nailed it. Ah. Yes, yes. Um, you nailed that one. You nailed that All one. All right, so I get to play again. Um, what is Bob Dylan's real name? I don't know, Chris. Obviously, it's Robert Zimmerman. <laughs> I can't believe that that's true. Um, okay. What color is the black box in an airplane? Red? I don't know. Is that your final answer? Yeah. It's orange. 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 It should be glow in the dark. Okay. True. It should be glow in the dark. Um, okay, last one. Wh who said champagne should be dry, cold, and free? Champagne should be dry, cold, and free. I have no idea. Come on, you know this. I honestly, you I don't know, know this Chris. One. Too many people like Winston that. Winston Churchill. Winston Churchill. Winston Churchill hmm. said that. Well, who's going to pay for it? Everybody has to pay for it. Somebody has to pay for the champagne. Somebody does. What is this? 
So Communism? this was flawed thinking. It was flawed thinking. I'm disappointed in old Winston. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised he actually said that. I think it's because he was fond of champagne. My microphone is drifting away. All right, let's get into the main topic. So this is called Bucking Authority. This, uh, this is We want to dig into this topic, um, which was stimulated for discussion by an article that you wrote, Prudence, that uh, may or may not be out yet, but an article that you wrote on your website, which is Prudence O'Hare. you got to go check it out. It's an amazing place to spend some time, read some of the things on Prudence's journal, which this is an article that's there. It's super fantastic, and I would love to, I'd love to dig into it. So, title is Bucking Authority. Um, just lay the foundation for us. When you say bucking authority, what do you mean? Like, I think most people probably have an idea what yeah. that means, but what are you talking about? Well, um, you know, this was just kind of stemmed from. Um, just taking a look at, um, again, our just culture, the family state, the church state, at, like everywhere, there's just this serious confusion huh. that's been happening um, about knowing who or what is actually in in the position of authority. Right. And, um, you mean they're not even sure who is? Yeah. Well, who, who's yeah. A, who's like, the authority? like for sure. Um, you know, even in, in just, um, today's political climate, there's so much, um, unrest. You just see it everywhere in all different types of thinking patterns. Um, y- y- people get, to the point where they're ripping up businesses and cities and there is just they're ripping down stuff they're destroying things they're yeah. angry yep. um they're just there's just all sorts of places that this confusion is happening from but there's also a a sense of um there's a there's a rebellion that's also attached to it Right. It's like an entitled rebellion kind of thing? Well, yeah. I think that there's different types of it probably, but um, it's just, it's really just a confusing mess. Even mm. just down to the very sure. simplifi- simplified version of yourself where there's messaging all over the place that's like, oh, we'll do what makes you happy. Right. Do what, right. do you do you, I'll do me. You have your truth, um, I have my yes, truth. Yes, that one, which I absolutely hate because it is it really, really throws problems in the places of authority because yep. when you remove that absolute truth, you have nothing to stand on, Yeah. foundationally speaking. Right. So, you know, when... Um, when God first created Adam and Eve, he laid down authority. Right. He didn't give them that much. Right. Yet. Right. They started <laughs> doing stuff, well, but he gave them like a piece of authority. Well, I mean, he gave them a lot of it. Th- you mean when what God gave them before they? No, like messed just up? saying, "Hey, here's something I don't want you to do." Oh, oh, yeah. So and he, so he gave them a choice. You're saying? Yeah. Yeah, he gave them. A, he gave yeah. them a choice, and that actually was what established free will. So a lot of times people are like, well, "Why do you have to put that tree in the garden?" Lord, if you just wouldn't have put the tree there, we wouldn't be in this mess. But you have to have the tree to have the choice. Yeah. If you don't have the choice, you you don't have free will. And then you're a robot. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, and I think really, you know, it seems like people just, they're, we just love to swing pendulums to the opposite side of the spectrums. Just, like, you yeah, just so tell see us it where, all the time. Tell us what the swing, what were we before and now where, where are we now? Like in your mind, the swing. Well, I think that before we were just in the space of um, just people pleasing, uh, beating our brains out in certain places of just like um, 
maybe more of like a, even like a religious legalistic mindset. Sure. Um, fostering just, you know, even workaholic lifestyles, which I think a lot of us still do that just to numb our right. lives and drown out things that we don't want to see or look at. For sure. Um, but it's just really, it's burnt out people largely. Mm -hmm especially with the constant confusion of who's in charge. Right. I mean, right. we're seeing this with even our police forces right now. Mm -hmm. No, they, they're, we're not respecting them. We're going to spit in their face. We're going right. to, you know, videotape them like crazy and, yep. and you know, all of this stuff, right. defund the police. Right. 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 So right. that's, that's a problem because are you, are we thinking through what happens when that authority gets removed? Guess what? Another one's coming in. Right. Another authority. Another authority. Yeah. There's always going to be somebody that is the in irony charge. of removing the one that you don't like is if you're not sure what's going to replace it, mm -hmm. like, be careful what you wish for. Well, yeah, exactly. Because, and I think that a lot of the cities are seeing the fruits of that now mm -hmm. is just like well maybe we shouldn't have done that right, right. <laughs> because somebody is gonna step up to bat to right. be in charge right. is always going to get filled uh with that so it's just um there is a really a really misalignment i think with people as a whole but more specifically even just for like believers like if we swing back and we look at this like how is this looking in a church um setting or um mm -hmm. christian community and um you know lots of people may say well but there's a lot of abusive leaders out there and sure. they need to be taken out sure well, you're, you're always going to always find gonna that you're always, always going to have that leaders. so but how do we handle that in a way that the Lord would have us handle it. So really, I mean, ultimately, it comes back to being aligned with the Lord yourself personally. Yeah. And him being your ultimate authority. Right. And when he That's is your so ultimate authority, you will respect the authority that he has put into place. And he will tell you if action needs to be taken. Right. And somebody needs to be removed. Right. But I think we have this idea that anything goes. Right. Whatever I <coughs> feel. I love how you wrote this. Um, emotionally healthy and happy follows obedience to the Lord. We're often putting the healthy and happy part ahead of the obedience part, and it doesn't add up. We want all the goodies of life without putting in the discipline of obedience to God. That's an authority issue. Yeah. I it think is. that is such a great way, how you said that, of illustrating this pendulum swing. Mm -hmm. So happy and healthy aren't bad. That's the trick, right? Right. So dig into that. Like, wait, I thought you said that was the problem. Then happy and healthy well, means I mean, bad, right? Our, the world wants to tell you how to be half happy and healthy really depends on how you feel that you are your own boss, that yeah. you decide. And ultimately, I mean, this is some truth. We do. Right. We do decide depending on us as individuals. But the world has built us into our own gods yeah. of sense. Oh, yeah. We worship ourselves. Mm -hmm. And when we worship ourselves, there is no place for another authority to come in and tell us how to live our lives. So you're saying once we have that self-focus, we've kind of pushed out the ability to have an authority. Yes. Right. Like this we, part here. We are our authority. Yeah. We have, you wrote, you wrote it this way. We have a love affair with the idea that our feelings matter more than what is right and wrong. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. And I mean, to elaborate on that, because, well, first of all, they do not. Right. They, do not. they do not. And this is another piece of this puzzle that's been building is like we have been basing right and wrong upon how we feel things should be mm -hmm. or shouldn't be. And 
um, because so many of us have been feeding the monster of feelings, <laughs> we've taken wrecking like balls to the authority feelings. that God has installed to specifically help correct mm. us when we need correction or give us trusted advice when we want it. Mm. Um, but many of us, either subconsciously or knowingly, will literally remove ourselves from relationships that may have the possibility of accountability in them. Wow. And this is done so we ourselves can be in control and not be told what to do or not do by anyone but ourselves. Wow. So let me ask you a question, though. So I think virtually everyone that's listening to this would say, well, I don't do that. I don't know who she's talking about, but I don't do that. So is this something that happens most of the time we don't even know we're doing it? I th I think a lot of times we will do it subconsciously. Okay. We, we're, we like just, we're, we're just kind of... We steer away from people yeah, that we, we think may call us out on something. Yeah, I just or, I don't know that I want to talk to that guy. Why? I don't know. I just, I don't know. But really, like, a couple layers down we're not even necessarily aware of. It's because we know that 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 dude's going to call me out. Yeah, or he might. Or I challenge mean, me, or has because, the authority because we'll that he should like call me out. Beliefs that aren't right will be in sin, practicing sin when we shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. um, never should we be practicing sin. Right. But a lot of us have made it a part of our lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, and we don't want to get close to people that we think might be cleaner than us, so to speak. Hmm, wait, what be do you mean by that? So you're saying we avoid people that are kind of have it together? Yes. So what do you mean by that? Press into that. I mean, like, when, when if I was hiding a lot of things or living double a double life outside of what a churchgoer may think that I, I live so outside the life, you're kind of projecting to the world. Mm -hmm. Okay. If I'm living a double life, um, I can't get too close to somebody that I think isn't living a double life because, A, it'll make me feel bad mm -hmm. about myself. I see. I see what you're saying. It'll make me feel guilty. It will possibly make me feel shame. Yeah. Um, and I don't want them telling me what to do. Right, right. Right. Or that I'm doing something wrong. How dare they mm -hmm. is kind of the thinking. But also, I mean, when we have alignment with the Lord, we're viewing people as possible messengers from him. Mm -hmm. So when we're not in that alignment, you're going to see people that might tell you that you're doing something wrong as simply um, something that needs to be cast off. Right. When ultimately it's... Right. It, very well could be that the Holy Spirit is using them as a vessel sure. to tell you, come away from that. Yeah, so you're saying sometimes they're the donkey that has a message for us on the road? Yeah, well, not exactly, <laughs> but you know, yeah. Uh, that's funny. You have in here this uh, story where, uh, remember when the the guy came forward after church on Sunday and he needed to tell me a bunch of things that we did wrong. Yeah. And, um, he just had this list, uh, and he kept apologizing to, he's like, I'm sorry, I've got this big laundry list of things that I, that you aren't, you guys aren't doing well. And he like reads through these 10 little things, um, which were, you know, very opinionated. Like there was no, there was nothing in there. That was really, anyways, that's not the point. Nitpicky and, stuff. But then, but then at the end he goes, hey, look, look, don't feel bad. I was just at a different church last week and I had a list for them too. And I was like, I bet you did, bro. I bet you did. Like this guy was a self-prescribed, proclaimed auditor of, of various services. I thought that was super... Super funny. Yeah. But the point of sharing that story was that w you didn't disrespect him. Mm -hmm. You didn't mock him. You didn't scream at him or anything like that. In no. fact, after he got done talking about it, we actually did do some examination to find out if there was something we needed to change oh, sure. in the future. 
And he didn't have, like, he really had no authority, really, in our establishment to speak into anything. <laughs> no, he was just busy. <laughs> and yeah, that is one thing funny. that about authority is that, you know, we don't just, like, there, there's obviously different um, brackets of authority. Right. And we also give people authority in our life that shouldn't have authority either. Yes. So that's a whole nother topic that isn't really described here. Yeah. But just so to make sure I understand what you mean, you're saying sometimes, so what I think I heard you say is there's, there's kind of different things that can happen. One is somebody should be able to speak into our lives with authority but we're rejecting it. Right. And then another one is sometimes someone really shouldn't have any authority to speak into our lives, yeah. but we actually allow them to speak in and have more exactly. authority and more weight than is warranted, than is correct, than is appropriate. Right, exactly. So I think um, one of the things that's been a little bit confusing to me about as like I'm learning how when someone comes up and says, oh, I have a word for for you from the Lord or whatnot sure. is to hear what they say, but then also examine what they say and check in with the Holy Spirit and say, is this from you or is this from them or is this from the devil for, from them? Like really before you actually accept it, really examine it right. because you don't know this person a lot a, a large amount of the time you right. don't you don't know that and you need to be careful about who you let speak into your life right so again that goes back to kind of what you're saying is you, you don't want so you say well i wouldn't do that why would why would i let someone that doesn't have authority speak into my life what if they're speaking something that you want to hear then it's it's much easier to let them speak into your life in an authoritative way that's actually not appropriate. I think that's one of the things I hear you saying is is we have to be really smart, pay attention to, be purposeful about understanding, you know, what are the things and at what level should this person, at, uh, what level of authority should we allow them to have in? What's appropriate? Mm -hmm. And there's this two sides. What I hear you saying is there's this two sides we're seeing. There's like a total rejection of it, right? Like, no one has the authority to tell me. Well, no, there's people that God's put in your life that do have authority to speak into your life. And then the other side is, I really like what this guy's saying. I'm going to give him more authority to speak mm -hmm. into my life than is actually appropriate just because I love the message. Right. And when we do, when we have made a decision about someone that we feel should have an authority to speak into our lives. I think that it's important that we come to, you know, we don't necessarily take off our discernment hats and mm -hmm. our wisdom hats yep. and set them down. Right. But I we, mean, we do, definitely shouldn't be but we that. do <laughs> have to come to a point of um, relationship with these people that, that we can trust, that we can feel safe that we can hear from them if they're if they do need to rebuke us on something, um, because we all have to have correction at some point in our lives, um, right. because it's an important part of life, and um, I think that you know uh, um, that there is a, a lot of undermining that happens if we don't. Mm disconnect Undermining. from the idea that that's good we're just gonna hang our hats if they're just gonna keep correcting us on something or you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. it's it's like there's this in order for the um believer communities to work together well we have to have some sort of established authority among us. Mm -hmm. Like first yeah. there's God mm -hmm. and everybody goes to that direction. But then you also have these levels of human beings that have been given authority within your community that we all need to pay attention to. And um, anyway, so, uh, maybe you can phrase it So are you, saying, it are you saying like... Like we need to have a denomination? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying like 
there's there's people in our midst and in our church that we respect on a higher level. I think I understand. They're you're saying their that, connection with the Lord that it, that they're more mature and ahead of us. Right. So I think what I hear you saying is that it is appropriate and important, and I I think I I even hear you saying it's even necessary to have authorities in your life. So obviously God is first, but then it's not inappropriate to have authorities. And that doesn't mean that you got to like create a giant denomination and assign crazy weird names and you're a bishop and what, like you're not saying that you're saying it is appropriate. And the model that God has given us is a model with authority in it. Right. So like even when Paul was having this kind of thing, then he went to the council, right? Like there's all these different examples, even with the, the apostles way back where there was authority kind of set up. So that is a model that is that is a biblical model. It's a godly model, mm-hmm. and it's for a good reason. That's what I think I hear you saying. Right. So if you find that you're in a place where no one is your authority, or you have, uh, this is, I think, super common, you have somebody like, oh, no, uh, there's authorities that speak into my life. Except you only accept those if they're saying things that are already in alignment with everything you already think. And the second they say something that's out of alignment, then they're no longer an authority in my life. And I will reject them. And I'll cut them off. It's the cancel culture coming in. It's the cancel culture creeping in like the Mr. Sin puppet into our midst. Right. So that's like two sides of it, right? Yeah. And that is largely when we're operating off of our feelings Mm -hmm. and not about what is actually right, what is actually wrong. Um, That's when, when the whole cancel culture, that's all based upon feelings. Yeah. And it's really interesting too, because like um, you, you kind of see this everywhere and I think people don't have any idea they're doing it, but well, I just feel, I just feel. Well, I was feeling, how do you feel? What do you feel about this? Well, I think, I feel, um, which again, I don't think you're saying this. I'm certainly not saying this. We, we're not supposed to remove feelings. Feelings and emotion are 100% God-given tools. It's just, they're, they're tools, not masters. Like feelings make amazing tools. They make terrible masters. And I feel like the culture and what I hear you saying and what I think is in this this article that you wrote is we have like, as a culture at large, Western culture at large, swung over to feeling, 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 feeling. Like, what are we feeling? Mm-hmm. How, what do we think about this? I remember um, 20 years ago in some Bible study that where we were at, um, we were, you know, maybe it was 25 years. I don't know. We were just barely married. And... Um, we were kind of reading through something. I don't even remember what it was, but this girl goes in the study, she goes, we're just reading scripture. She goes, "Mm, I don't like that. And I'm thinking, (laughs) so what? (laughs) I don't know that I like it either. And then she follows it up with, I don't think that's godly. I don't think that's God. So, um, well, what do you mean? So I pressed into it a little bit. Well, I just don't feel like that's what God would say. So, Okay, so if you work with the assumption that the 66 books are a supernatural, canonized word of God that is 100% true, if you don't believe that, then that's a different topic. Different pod, different TV episode, different discussion. So let's just assume that you believe that. If you believe that, then you can't cut out one part because you don't feel like that's what God would say. Like, there's a ton of stuff in scripture that I believe God has put in there specifically to make us dig in deeper to learn more about his infinite nature. Like he's, we can, we could, we could go forever studying the Lord and never reach the depth of understanding of who he really is. So there's a lot of things we're going to have to just read and go, whoa, not Mm, I don't know. Let's cut that. Let's just take a razor blade and slice that verse out. I don't like that verse because it doesn't really feel quite right. Mm-hmm. Chances are the feelings that are off are on your side, not God's side. Yeah. 
So when we talk about um, the idea of us of cancel culture just happening um, a lot within, like we drag so many things in that the world is doing into our our church communities, um, but we really have to come back to a place of. Um, alignment with what God says. Mm -hmm. And that includes obedience to God and respecting and valuing covenant relationships with each other. Wow. Because that is something that has been largely thrown out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I think that, um, I think what happens, okay, so like, it, so like a great example is if you talk to a lot of people in the world, they're like, I hate organized religion. And they say, well, why? Look how much damage organized religion has done. Wars started. People murdered. What about the Crusades? Yeah, all great examples of how not to be. But that doesn't mean that organized religion is actually bad. It means that people with too much power made bad choices in the name of organized religion. Right? Mm -hmm. So like like trying to connect the dots and therefore throw everything away. I mean, you're just going to keep canceling and canceling and canceling and canceling it's like not, everything. It doesn't work. Everything can be uh, disrupted and it taken work. off track and poisoned in some way. It doesn't work. Let's Let's talk about Michael Jordan. If Michael Jordan based his future basketball career on how he did his first 10 free throws or his first 10 three-point shots, we wouldn't have a Michael Jordan. Right? So, like, we, you can't take something out of context that isn't working quite, quite right and then say, well, I mean, in his first five th – his first 10 free throws, he missed seven of them. So I guess he's not for basketball. He's not, that's not his talent. That would be crazy, right? Because he's brand new. He's just learning how he's just shooting the basketball for the first time. We don't yet know. No one would throw out and say, well, no, he's not. But that's what people are doing with this. They're like, well, I mean, this pastor did something really bad. And uh, so I can't trust pastors or the church does this one thing that I don't agree with. So therefore, like we don't live any other part of our life that way. Mm. So I, it just, it becomes very easy, I think, for the enemy to come in those and, and excuses. use those excuses. The devil is offering us excuses. Yeah, sing it, sing it. <laughs> I know you've got a little song. Uh, excuses, no, we, we have more to excuses. talk about. Okay, okay so um, so the leader is in charge. They're the ones taking us into a certain direction. And, so you're talking and about leaders right now in the church? Or? Just, well, yes, ultimately. Um, what do you want, up or I, down? Yeah, go, go um, this is yes, the, the this, green, this the is green the there. The end of your whole document here. <laughs> the green. Okay. So I think I'll just start with this, but if we say God is the ultimate authority, but he's also installed leaders for us in each other. Mm. That's good. So yeah. you, we all get appointed to certain different places and get responsibility. And right. with that comes the authority. Right. So um, the word leader is often seen as a specialty position. Hmm. But I would like to put forward the idea that every single one of us are born leaders just in different places, spaces, and seasons. Um, so we all need to understand that leading does not mean we are leading people mm -hmm. in the right direction. Oh, that's true. Leader doesn't mean you're leading in the right direction. Is that right. what you said? Right, that is what I said. Yeah. Okay, so if we are all leaders on some level, then the question then becomes, who am I leading? Mm -hmm. And where am I leading them? Mm -hmm. So we've even got children that are leaders. Mm -hmm. They're they're leaders oh, sure. in their little friend pack. They're they're just they're born to just take charge and mm -hmm. 
um, and whatnot, but that is a question that, that we all have to ask. Like, if you're a mother, you're leading children. Right. If you're a dad, you're leading your family. Right. If you're just married, the husband should be leading his wife and so on and so on, you know? So, um, anyway... But also, a leader with no awareness of the direction they are going is going to end up leading people exactly to that end. Mm. Nowhere. Nowhere. Yep. So it is also very important for us to... you don't have a plan, you're planning to fail kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then here's a really touchy one. That some leaders expect other leaders to rise to the occasion. To what actually do, do their jobs I that they've been reasonable. designated to, like, do <laughs> to do a good job in what they've been tasked to do, to be trusted, to take care of themselves and grow. Like, um, but this is almost as bad as the word obedience in a lot of in a lot of people's ears. I think. So uh, let me make sure I understand. So you're saying that they shouldn't expect other leaders to I think, fulfill I think their obligation the responsibility the flavor of the day largely is comes back to accountability yeah and the whole sure, the too. whole thing of nobody wants the authority over them so even in just like right. the christian circles people are like don't tell me what to do yeah. or you know yeah. um, how dare you tell me what to do and it's really hard because you know leaders who have these expectations around them for people to grow mm -hmm. can run into a lot of conflict. Yes. I mean, that's true. not only are we making it difficult for our leaders to lead, but we're really causing a lot of problems with ourselves right. and the example that we're setting around us. Yeah. So, um, anyway, um, yeah, so it's as if um, us believers, we have this idea that the grace of God is supposed to somehow cover our butts from doing a poor job, complaining, living double lives, fostering laziness, and presenting a general disrespect of the church authority. So let me see if I understand. So are you saying that a lot of times in the church, um, what you're seeing is that people will kind of use the Lord or use Christianity or use kind of Jesus as, as an excuse for doing a poor job. Say, well, you know, grace. You gotta, you gotta give them grace. Right. You gotta love everybody. We're yeah. all a family. Exactly. Yes, I am. I'm saying that so you're saying you we, don't like that? We have it's a no but. We have like no done some sort of a weird thing where it's like, wow, you know, God is the ultimate authority, and I'll, I'll believe him if he tells me, not you. Okay, so I feel like that's two different things. So that's like saying uh, someone that uh, is appropriate for them to have authority says, hey, uh, um, I this isn't right what you're doing, or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. And you're saying, oh, look, if the Lord has a problem with it, he'll tell me himself. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that's so that's one issue. Then the other issue is kind of expecting and facilitating mediocrity and using God as a, as as an excuse why that's okay. So let's talk about the other one first. Hey, I don't. I'm not going to give you any authority to hold me accountable to anything or discipline or or you know just calling calling something that maybe needs a change in my life because God will tell me himself what is is what do you mean by that um i don't understand your question well i'm trying to understand what you're saying which what i heard you say was sometimes people will say hey um i don't need to listen to you cuz god can tell me if he's got a message for right. me right and maybe god so is trying to that? tell you through that person. Through that person. Sure. Okay, so we, uh, we've somehow come into such a fragile state. Mm -hmm. Sensitive, very S sensitive. So sensitive, we, we actually uh, love that because it, it makes everybody else have to walk on eggshells around us mm -hmm. because if they dare say anything 
I'm out of here. As if, as if, you know, our church, yep. the church community can't move on without them or something. Like yeah. they literally hold that leader hostage. Right. We hold them hostage. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think we've seen it a lot. Yeah. Like actually and it's seen really that ugly. It's really ugly. And if we think that the Lord doesn't see that and, mm-hmm. and, um, like I, I'll just leave it there. I'll so, just leave so, it there. So if we could summarize that little thing, I, what I think I hear you saying is, is we need to be really careful to not dismiss someone that the Lord might be using to speak into our lives. Correct. Is really what you're saying. That is right? correct. Like you're really saying, yeah, we need to be very, very, very careful because sometimes if somebody's delivering a message we don't like, it doesn't mean we just go dismiss it because the Lord might be literally sending us that message specifically. Right. Um, I think, you know, we can't necessarily grow and flourish if we don't have some respect for um, authority in our life somewhere. Mm-hmm. We just don't. I mean, you can see this with raising children. Yeah. They need that discipline. They need mm-hmm. that um, yep. those boundaries and the accountability. Yes. And um, we adults are really not a lot different. We're yeah. just, our bodies just matured. Right. It doesn't necessarily mean that our mental states went somewhere yeah i mean (laughs) i know a lot of adults that i think are have gone backwards Mm -hmm. uh backwards so okay so let's talk about the flip side of that that you were referencing earlier which is um let me tell in a little story so there was someone that we were working with that was an unorganized mess i mean a mess and um, they took on too much. They made too many commitments, and they weren't organized in a personal way. Their personal life wasn't organized. They just were doing a lousy job, honestly, managing the things that they had management over. And they um, were asking you to uh, do some worship music for an event, or some to do some piano music for a prayer event. And they just you had asked, I think, three or four times um, for. The music, what is the music, what's the music, uh, weeks in advance. And, and literally, they never, oh, I'll get that, I'll get that today, I'll get that today, I'll get that this week. And they never got it. And then at the actual event, they still hadn't gotten you the music, if I remember right. And I approached this person and I said, this is not okay. There is no excuse for you to have not gotten Prudence what she needed. What she was asking for is very reasonable. You're asking for her to do a favor. You couldn't even do, you couldn't even get her the thing that she needed, which was music to prepare for this. And they said this, and I think this is what you're talking about here. They said, well, I'm sorry, man. I I didn't mean to do that, but it's so awesome that, um, you know, as a family, we just have grace to cover that kind of stuff. And I was super ticked, and I said, (laughs) <laughs> that is the most idiotic excuse I've ever heard for doing a bad job. In my mind, this is the person that you should care more about. Now, if you make a mistake, then we should have grace for someone. But this was like, I'm going to do a bad job and I'm going to justify that poor job because you need to give me grace. You got to give me grace because we're family after all. We're all serving the same God, right? And mm-hmm. I, I think that that is all over the place right now. Yeah, it really is. It's let's push over the uh, grace card when we just want to. Uh, you said grace card, not race card. Grace. Grace card. Yeah. To cover ourselves of our poor behavior yeah. and disrespect and Gosh. dishonor. It's not good. And uncommitted attitudes. We should never be playing the grace card. Everything else. It's not okay. Yeah. Um, so here's one thing, like speaking just to um, adults, is that the kids are watching us adults here. Yes, we are setting the true. example for future generations because we are the leaders of the next generation. Yeah. Um. 
So questions, what choices are they watching us make? Right. You know, they're very perceptive so little human beings. Yes. You're Not talking about kids right kids, now. Kids, kids. Yeah. Not a lot gets past them. I mean, I think it's true with everybody, but Yeah, but I think... adults seem to forget what it was like to be a child. Yeah. To be there in that position. And they just don't miss a lot. Mm-hmm. They're hugely perceptive. They are learning. They're little sponges, and they just soak up everything Yeah, as they're growing. And they see us as authority, or they should see us as authority. Yes. <laughs> um, so what things are they hearing us say? Mm-hmm. And what are our kids reflecting back to us from ourselves right. even when yeah. it comes to this? So, you know, because we uh, should be an authority in their lives, I, I thought that this was very appropriate to add because – we need to understand that with this um, um, confusion about authority, mm-hmm. it is important that we ourselves have the correct mindset and alignment yeah. so we can then teach our kids. But more than that, that we live it ourselves yeah, because good. you're not fooling anyone but yourself if you live in fallacy. Yeah, deep and down hypocrisy. inside, you're not fooling yourself either. You right? Know. You know. Yeah, but the, you know, it just all comes back to um, the authority is if it works for me, it works for me. Right. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. Right. I'm not going to have it. I'm not going to respect yep. it at all. And I think that's like, I think that's part of the problem is we've just, uh, so I think in the last 200, 300, 400 years, We've worked so hard as a human race to make things easier, which is absolutely not a problem in a lot of ways. Like, we can accomplish more now than we ever could before, so that's fine. But we've worked so hard to make things comfortable that we've kind of misplaced ultimate goal with comfort. And then that just gets applied universally. So, like, like we've been talking about the entire episode is when things make us uncomfortable, then we have this kind of like, felt like righteous justification to resist it. I don't like that. That makes me uncomfortable. I'm pushing back on that. And that's not God's model. Like very little of what he asks us to do is comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that, you know, at the same time, we don't want to swing the pendulum, you know, the other way from where it used to be where, well, no, righteousness is like, you know, self-denial and being miserable and the poorer and more miserable and the more pain that you're in, that that's an indication of how righteous you are. Like, that's not kingdom either. That's not even remotely kingdom. So we can't, like, correct that by going ridiculous over to the, well, I, I just I don't like the way that makes me feel. So I'm not going to do it. Right. Like, it doesn't work. Right. It doesn't work. Or does right. it? Does it work for you? <laughs> Has it worked for well, you? Well, let's just say you're just cheating yourself and others around you. Yep. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if we believe, if we think and we believe that we all are kind of, you know, working together to accomplish what the Lord has for us, um, then we, like, need to be doing our parts, right? Mm-hmm. And we have to have persistence in it, too. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you mean by that, persistence? Well, you know, just... Working with each other, having relationships, it's a lot of work to do it well. Yeah. It is a constant work to do it well. And I would like to say that things get easier, and perhaps maybe they do, the more that you work and smooth and work and smooth. But um, I just feel like um, just the topic of authority is really important for all of us to look at, especially now in today's oh, times. For sure. Um, but it's like whatever's happening out in the world wants to creep into the church. Mm-hmm. It wants to, and it, wants it to does. Influence. It, it really does because we are all we're being influenced by things we shouldn't be. Yeah. So. Um, it's happening within our church. We we seriously are um, resisting a lot of authority 
that we shouldn't be resisting to. Right. That doesn't mean we have to agree with everything. That is absolutely true. But we have to be able to get to a point where we're not canceling each other. Right. Because somebody said right. you were wrong. That's right. That's right. And, and getting and our, our just getting it's just up. getting worked up because Defensive. we of all the peoples in the world, the believers of the one and only God should be the outliers of what the world says is normal. Oof, man, that's good. Wait, say that again. As believers, we should be the outliers we of what's normal. should be the outliers of what the world says is normal and Oof. okay. Right. Okay? So when the churchgoers have no better track record and sometimes worse than the world, right. we've got some serious issues and yep. problems to solve, and it starts within ourselves individually. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's just no way the bride of Christ can move forward if we cannot all be living in harmony with each other and working through yeah. things with each other. Yeah, that's good. If we can't master reconciliation, if we can't master our tongues, if we can't master, um, these things, it's, it, it just, it breaks. And they should be. It just keeps breaking and breaking and breaking. And these things should be, like we have tools and examples in scripture, like they should, it should be easy to master these things, right? Well. Like, like we should, we should be, like, we should be a bit above, beyond, we should have advanced beyond yes. these petty things. Yes, we most certainly should. Okay, so the breakage, it has to come to a halt. Mm. It has to. Yeah. And. When um, you say breakage, you're just talking about all this, right? Like yes, all of these all different. Of this dysfunctions Mm -hmm. yeah so we just we just really need to be to head into a space of humility Mm. humility and that surrender and that um desire uh to go after what the lord wants not what we want not what makes us feel good good or comfortable it's about what god wants not me and and we have to have the persistence to, um, we, we can't stop. We can't stop. We I have way, to keep going. I love the way you wrote this. The sneaky snake of arrogance must be caught and killed. And we must move into humility where we are able to expect and accept the authority that God has given over us. Mm-hmm. S- sneaky snakes. Yeah. Yes. That's Get exactly rid of the right. Sneaky snakes. So anyway, these are just a few of my thoughts. So, anyways, <laughs> now I, Prudence, I feel like um, I feel like this is such a powerful reminder, and it is. It's just a, a little tiny glimpse of, you know, uh, of one facet of how the world's influence has kind of creeped its way into the church and. So how do we prevent against that, right? Like, how do we prevent against that? Like, we have to have Jesus as the authority that we're looking at to quantify and measure. Is this appropriate? Let me see. Let's look at Jesus as the litmus test. Is this appropriate? Let me see. Is this appropriate? Let me see. And we can't do that if we don't have a relationship with the Lord. Like, it's going to be much easier to miss it, right? Like, this is an overused example, right? But when they do training, for bank tellers to spot counterfeit money, they give them real money. They make them spend lots of time, hours and hours and hours with real money so that when they feel the counterfeit, they immediately recognize it because they're so used to the real. So same true with our walk with the Lord. If we're, if we're not so used to the Lord that the second we feel the counter, the, the devil, the counterfeit, we recognize it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to be very hard to recognize it, right? Because right. because the Bible says that 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 the that Satan is uh, comes as an angel of light. Well, I like think, he looks I think really too good. Many of us, he sounds really too good. Too many of us are fami- more familiar with the devil's ways than the Lord's. Oof, well, that's not good. That's not good. That's not good. And I think that's the reason why it's been so easy for us to get off track as Christians, um, because we're not familiar enough with the authentic 
we're not familiar enough with the authentic, that the second we experience the fake, we recognize it. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I think, you know, this whole culture of, I want things to be comfortable and easy. And we have companies that are literally named Lazy Boy. <laughs> like, like, I mean, like our culture is like obsessed with... Worshipping ourselves. Comfort. We're worshiping ourselves. And when we yeah. start when we worship ourselves, there is no authority. And it's chaos. Yes. It's chaos everywhere. Yes. Nobody can stay together. Nobody can uh work together. Nobody can have conversations together. Nobody can work like there is no unity. Except for in devious ways. Right. I think of, it makes me think of that verse, uh, 1 Corinthians 9, 27. Um, NIV is, no, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the price. Okay, that's not the way I learned it. I learned it um, King James. I think New King James, but I discipline my body. No, where's the one where it says I buffet? What's the one that buffet. says I buffet my body? I buffet my body. One of these is a buffet, and I always stuck with me because here it is, NASB, New American Standard, 1977. But I buffet my body and make it my slave lest possibly. After I have preached to others, I myself should be disqualified. And he's making a comparison to being a runner. He's like, no, I got to. Like, I got to work out so I don't lose the race. So that doesn't sound like lazy boy. That sounds like, yeah. no, I'm purposeful. I'm like working. I'm being smart about it. And I'm, I'm purposeful about making sure that what mm -hmm. I'm doing is in alignment with the Lord call me. And it doesn't mean that there's not time for rest because there's time for rest. Like, if you're training for a race, you also have to rest for recovery. But it's not about the rest. It's about the race. And you got to be prepared for the race. It's not about the rest, it's about the race. And I think that's where we've gotten off track. And I feel like this, this article, Bucking Authority, that you wrote, Prudence, is just like such a, it's like a, I don't have a good but. I will cheer. A cheer is a good one. A cheer is a good one. Any last thoughts as we wrap this up? Um, no, I guess not. I mean, I just... I just feel like... I want to end on an encouraging note. Like, um, we have more of an impact individually than we know. Ooh, that's so and good. And it is very important for us to take a look at these things and, and look at ourselves, examine ourselves. Yeah. And say, is this a problem for me? Right. And if it is, where mm -hmm. are these areas that um, I am resisting authority in? Yeah. And um, that's good. Just, just that's really doing good. self examination and then maybe just taking some that's action good. on it is really important. That's good. That's so good. That's so good. Well, we want to we want to encourage you to, you know, fight the good fight, run the good race, like. And, um, you know, don't get distracted. So, you know, on that note, we'll see you guys on the next time. But before we go, I just want to remind you, you can support uh, everything we're doing here at Eagle Mountain TV. This is a 24-7 a TV network. There's tons of amazing content. If you've not seen any other programs, first of all, you're in the middle of the second season for, of Together We Build with Chris and Prudence. So there's other episodes. You've got to go check those out. You go to eaglemountain.global, click on the TV button and all the programs are there. there's also amazing stuff from bobby hobby and don potter and there's just tons of amazing content there so you're going to want to go check that out eaglemountain.global also um we would love your support we would absolutely love it if you would support this program um, even consider like a monthly support and you can go to eaglemountain.global click on the give button and then you can put in there eagle mountain tv or you can put in there um together we build and actually support the work that we're doing it's it's difficult expensive takes a lot of effort to you know get this content out to the world so we would love your support in that if you have any questions let us know you, we want to hear from you too go to eaglemountain.global click on that contact button 
I want you to think of 107 people to immediately share this episode with right now. Go ahead and share it to them, right? Should we go for 120? Uh, 120 people. Share it with them, and we will see you guys on the next one. All right.